audio drama. Episode 7 Renadine Part 4 of 4 Written by Joe Duncan It's a full house tonight. Fantastic. Are you okay? Yes. Why wouldn't I be? You just... you don't look very well. You're sweaty. I overran in the market and I, I had to run back to the hotel. I couldn't risk missing this. God, I'm thirsty. There's a small kitchen just opposite. Help yourself to water. So we're on the same page, yes? We think Ray is actually the Renity. It all seems to fit. No, it's hardly an imaginative name though, is it? The important thing is to not put Abigail at any risk. Sure. I mean it. I don't want her getting hurt. I said sure. So, we do the show, we ask for a volunteer to help demonstrate some of our equipment and we make sure we pick him out. Then you strap him with the silver handcuffs, we pretend we left the key backstage and we usher him out of here. Then I shoot him. If we verify that he is indeed the killer. If who's the killer? Ah! Ray, I didn't hear you open the door. I just got here. Am I interrupting something? Not at all. Carl Trevino, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Looks busy out there. And you'll never guess who's presenting the talk. Your old buddy Preston. Of course it is. Come on, Abigail. Let's find some seats. Are you sure you want to sit this far back? Yes. James doesn't show up, but he is nervous. I don't want to distract him. It's very considerate of you. Especially for two people who are fighting. You never fight with your friends. You know, my mum always says we never fight with people we don't care about because it would be a waste of energy. So the two of you are close? He's my best friend. Not that I'd tell him that. (laughs) Just like any friend, there are times when your personalities clash. It's no big deal. We just... We're just both under a lot of stress at the moment. Something is bothering him and he's lashing out. Is it the same thing that's bothering you? I... I never really thought about it like that. I just sort of... Assumed it was him not liking breaking from his usual routine. Ah, I see. Sounds like the two of you are very good friends. Perhaps a little space is all that's needed. Sometimes a bit of space can mend a world of issues. Are you a philosopher as well as a poet? I have my moments. (laughs) I feel really relaxed around you, you know. Thank you. No, I mean, that's really good. It's really unusual for me. You've been single for a while? Oh, yeah. No interest from other boys? There's been interest, definitely. Though that tends to dry up at the first mention of studying poltergeists and the like. There is an ex-boyfriend who is still sort of in the picture as well. I'm not stepping on any toes, I hope. You aren't. We're just friends. Sometimes I think he wants to give it another shot, but it just isn't something I'm interested in. We make good friends. We didn't make great romantic partners. Humans are like puzzle pieces. Sometimes they just don't quite fit together, no matter how much you try to force it. (laughs) You're so cheesy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce that tonight's panel is a sellout crowd. Without further ado, please allow me to introduce, making his debut appearance at the Para-X convention, and my close personal friend, Mr. James Hunter. I wonder if these light fixtures would support my weight. Oh, I felt bad for him. And an expert in the field of occult studies. You know him, you love him, Mr. Carl Trevino! Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. I know I speak for James here when I say it is an honour to be here. Well, let's not drag our heels. Where's our first question? My question is for James Hunter. (laughs) Why do you hate us? (laughs) <laughs> well, I, I don't believe I've ever said I hated you, or, or hated anybody for that matter. In your books, you routinely deride the field of psychical research as filled with hucksters and conmen looking for woolly-minded individuals who are looking to take advantage of. Ouch. How do you respond to that one, buddy? Um, <clears throat> it is true that I may have said those things. Whilst it certainly is not my intention to upset anybody, I do stand by what I said. Unfortunately, many of us in this room, and I count myself amongst them, 
are so desperate to see something supernatural that sometimes we have a tendency to show bias in favour of evidence that supports what we want. We can be guilty of ignoring simpler explanations simply because we want something to be true. Why did you stop writing books? Well, I, I actually took a little career break. After ten years of never finding anything, I was beginning to lose faith, but... Well, let's just say it found me again. More like it dragged you kicking and screaming back to normality. Next question. Mr Trevino, you're known as one of the best scholars of the life of Alistair Crowley, and even spent some time at Boleskine House. Do you think there is any connection between the rituals of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and the current government? (laughs) <laughs> yes, it is true. I was fortunate enough to spend several months at the Boleskin house prior to the fire that destroyed it. As for our government, I rather feel that... Carl held the gullible audience captivated, as showmen like him often did. He weaved a complex-sounding tale filled with speculation and deliberately misinterpreted evidence just enough to lead the audience in the sensationalist direction he wanted, without lumping himself in with them. You come right out and say that the Houses of Parliament are a hotbed of satanic activity, well, you're a crackpot. It's very bad for book sales. However, if you lay all the breadcrumbs and allow your already delusional fan base to reach that conclusion themselves, well, that would be a jackpot. And that's when James broke the Spectrum Scanner. (laughs) Oh, you should have seen him. For a man who apparently doesn't believe in ghosts, he sure was scared that night. That isn't exactly how it happened. Oh, I was there, James. Or is your memory faltering you also? (laughs) Might need to stay away from the liquor, old friend. (laughs) Well, it's very polite of you all to ask James about his new book, but I'm sure we all know the truth is there isn't one coming. It's been like, what, five years since the last one? Only two. Well, you know what they say, my friend. Lack of awareness is a death knell in this industry. The audience demand a consistent stream of content. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe we should care more about the quality of our work as opposed to the quantity. To be fair, James, I don't think anyone here would feel we were losing much if you did choose to retire now. Am I right? Why is he being so mean? I say this as a friend, you know, James. I can see you aren't the man you used to be. It's okay. Age comes for us all sooner or later. It's just dulling your edge sooner than it does most. I should get up and say something. Suddenly, fine, don't you know? You don't want to interrupt. I mean, it is true, isn't it, that a recent investigation of yours resulted in the tragic death of a young woman? What? James investigated a case at the Vandenberg Academy just south of here. It's a private school where the well-to-do send their children. Don't do this. Unfortunately, despite his best efforts, James was not able to prevent the death of a young lady who threw herself from a roof, resulting in her demise. I tried to talk her out of it. Hmm, so you say. Unfortunately, we won't know. Because you and your assistant, Miss Abigail Corbin, were the only ones on the roof that night, correct? How do you know all of this? Okay, folks, okay, let's settle down. Maybe I shouldn't point fingers. It's just James spoke of quality in investigative work, and I wholeheartedly agree with him. We must hold one another to account. Mustn't we, James? Yes. That absolute bastard. I hope James smacks him one. Who would like a demonstration of some of our monster hunting tools, hmm? Okay. The first thing I want to show you all is how we deal with shapeshifters. Now, I've been hunting a shapeshifter recently. A rather mean-spirited son of a gun who likes to abduct young women. (gasps) I know. Terrible. Terrible. Are you okay? You're fidgeting. Sorry. Can't get comfortable. Now, the golden rule to remember with all shifters is that they hate silver. It's not just werewolves, but all kinds of shapeshifting creatures. Hmm... Maybe I ought to call that the silver. (laughs) There are only two known ways to permanently kill a shapeshifter. The first, and bloodier, is by removing the head, i.e. completely severing it from the spinal column. The second 
is to pierce the heart with silver. It doesn't necessarily have to be a silver bullet. It can be a silver dagger or knife or even a silver needle. It does, however, have to be silver and not just stainless steel. I'm afraid there's no off-brand when it comes to hunting the supernatural folks. <laughs> no. I understand killing a living thing, that's difficult. Even if it is a monster, not everybody has the stomach for it. So maybe you just need to restrain your monster. For that, I like to use these. Silver-plated handcuffs. The silver plating is enough to negate the shapeshifter's strength and ensure it cannot break free. This will also confirm for you if the target is in fact a shapeshifter or not. For instance... Hey! As we can see, James here is not a shapeshifter. Otherwise, the metal would be singeing the skin around the wrists. What are you doing? This wasn't the plan. It's a new plan. What do we think, folks? Should I let him out? No! <laughs> <laughs> what a silly sausage I am. I've only got to left the key in the dressing room. Let me out right now. I need you to stay in one place for a few moments whilst I run a quick errand. What errand? Call it asset requisition. No. Oh, yes. How very rude of you to just take the prism like that, after I lent it to those two young women. You caused the incident at Vanderberg. You caused the incident at Vanderberg. No, those two girls caused the incident. I merely enabled. Then you came along and figured it all out. But you really did go soft, didn't you? Letting those two torpors walk about like they were normal human beings. Don't worry. As usual, I cleaned up after you. Just like the old days. No. You didn't. How could you? You were always a little short on imagination, James. You're a monster. Are you even really hunting a Renadine? Oh yes, of course. I'll get him later. Sweet Abigail will make wonderful bait for that particular trap. Now, if you don't mind, I have to get my prism back and you have a rabid crowd. Fear not, my audience. I will return momentarily with the key. Don't you dare. Get back here. My good audience, please keep James entertained with more of your questions. I'll be back in five minutes. Abigail! Abigail! I think he needs me. Yeah, he looks like he's panicking. Abigail! What is going on? Carl's double-crossing us. I told you he couldn't be trusted. What do you mean, double-cross? He's going for the prism. You need to get me uncuffed from this chair. It's silver. I can't break that. The key will be in the changing rooms, I bet. There's no time. No. No, 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 no. Abigail! Stop! I don't think you're in any position to be giving orders, Miss Corbin. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Can't you people think of anything original to say? Come inside and close the door too. No. Believe me. My preference is that nobody gets hurt during this, but if you push me, I will shoot you. You'd shoot an unarmed girl? Wouldn't be the first time. Now, come on in. Where is the Pythagoras prism? I'm not going to tell you that. Oh, what is the point of James taking you around and seeing all of this stuff if he isn't going to teach you the right things? Like what? <coughs> Oof! Like not to talk back to a guy with a gun. Now, where is the prism? It's, it's top of a drobe box. Excellent. Do you see how much smoother things go when you're a good girl? Fuck you. As nice as that sounds, I'm afraid we don't have time. Upsy daisy. Where are we going? Well, you're going to take a little nap. And when you wake up, I'll show you how a real hunter hunts. What? Mm. Oh. You're going to have one nasty headache, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. No, you're not. No, I'm not. What do you want now? 
I have one last little thing to take care of before I go on my merry way. I need to get paid. The shapeshifter. You need to kill it. Renadine. He's a Renadine. Renadine? Irish Werefox. That's where you come in. You're going to be baked. The Renadine's taken a shine to you, Missy. He'll track your scent right here and then, bang. Bit of silver in his heart. I collect my reward money. Whether or not I pull the trigger before or after he takes a bite out of your neck, well, that really depends on you. Ray? Ray is the shifter, isn't he? That's right. So he never liked me anyway? He just wanted to eat me? Not necessarily. Here's a little secret for you. I actually caught up to Ray several towns back. Can you believe it? Here's a Renadine trying to go vegetarian. He doesn't want to hurt people anymore. Apparently 200 years and it's suddenly all too much. That's why I bought these. What are those? Each of these glass vials contains pheromones from an alpha Renadine. Makes it impossible for the creature to resist its base impulses. You mean he was trying to be good and you turned him into a murder machine? Well, I knew I needed something to hook James's curiosity. He always did have a soft spot for dead girls. You arranged his invite to the convention? Bingo! You aren't going to get away with this. Why? Are you under the illusion that James is going to come and save you? Is the big strong man going to come and stop me? No. I am. Ah! Take this, you dick! That's it! Oh, that stinks! I hope you're ready for a reunion with Loverboy, sweetheart. Because he'll be able to smell you a mile off now. No! Crap! Crap! This stuff is strong. You aren't going to get it off like that. (gasps) Run, rabbit, run! (laughs) I tried to run, but the world was still swimming before my eyes. A side effect of the blow to the head and whatever chemical Carl had used to knock me out. I stumbled to the corner of the alley and tripped over a pile of garbage. Pulling myself to my feet, I stumbled into the next alley. I heard the howl of a fox echo through the night. Suddenly a figure appeared at the head of the alley, blocking my exit. Oh no, 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 no! Abigail! James! Quick, there's a... Ray? Ray, I need you to be calm. Abigail, come here! Ray, you don't want to do this. Abigail, look at his eyes. He's not human right now. He's changing. No. No, I can stop this. I can stop him from changing. I have to stop him from changing. Don't be ridiculous. Come here. He can overpower the pheromone. Come on, Ray. I know you can. (laughs) No. No. No! No, fight it, Ray! You have to fight! There's nothing to fight. This is his nature. He's an animal. Maybe part of him did like you. I'm sure a part of him wants to be a plain old human. But you hear that? Hear that growl? That's the not human part. And that part, it wants to eat you. Get a boy! (laughs) No, Abigail! Ah, I see they finally cut the cuffs free. Too bad. You aren't spoiling my fun tonight, James. Abigail! Don't worry, old friend. This is only her end. Not yours. I have much bigger plans. In fact, I... Impossible. No, Abigail. She's bitten his nose off. Oh my. She's infected. Wait, you know about this? James, old chum, it really is time I was going. I don't want to spoil what's coming next. Presuming you survive her, I'll see you in Greenvale. Come back here! Later, Ray. Abigail! Get away from me! Oh, my head! Abigail, Abigail, come here. Ray couldn't find what he was. I can't find what I am. I don't have the music with me. I don't have it. You need to run. I can feel it growing inside of me like some evil, filthy thing. It hates you. It wants me to kill you. Ah! Abigail, listen to me. I don't have the music to block the signal, so I'll have to do. Look at me. 
That's good. That's good. Listen to my voice. Listen to me. Abigail, you can fight this. I know that you can. You have held on longer than anyone else who was infected with this thing. And do you know why? Because you are the strongest person I have ever met. You have stood in the face of the strangest things and refused to back down. You have continued to search for a cure against overwhelming odds. You ran right onto that roof with me at Vandenberg Academy and you found me. When I was lost to everyone, you sought me out and you found me. Abigail, if you manage to get me off that couch and back into the business, then you can do anything. If you will it, you can make it happen. And I need you to. Do you hear me? I need you to keep fighting just a little longer. Because I can't lose you. I can't. You are the only thing that matters to me in this life. You are my only friend. Abigail. I don't know how much longer I can fight, James. I know. I know. Just a little longer. I promise I will find a way to cure you. He took the prism. I know, I know. Don't worry about that. I know where he's going. Did I kill Ray? No. Carl did. Come on. Let's get you back to the hotel. James took me back to the hotel and, seeing as how Carl had broken the lock on my door, he let me sleep in his bed. He stayed and watched me until I pretended to fall asleep. Then he went downstairs to the bar. I peeked through the door and could see him sitting there with a tumbler and a half-empty bottle of Jack. I don't blame him. It had been one hell of a day for him. He refused to talk about Carl any further once we got back to the hotel. But I knew it had hurt him to have his old friend, the one he had grown up with, turn out to be so evil. I have so loved these past few months, meeting my idol, working alongside him and seeing him come at least somewhat closer to his old self. If it is the last thing I ever did, it was a good thing. James had saved my life that night. The icy grip of the signal had been wrapping his fingers around me for the final time and his words, his kind and beautiful pleas, had cut through. Which is why I had to leave. James thinks he can save me, but this isn't like before. The signal's grip is still strong on me. Right now I can feel its shadow over my mind like I've never before. I know that any day now will be the final day that I have in control of my own senses. He can't fight that. We barely had a clue before, and now the prism is gone. My days are numbered. Even if James can't accept that. I don't want him to be around when I... When I change. I won't hurt him. (laughs) Sure enough, he's virtually passed out at the bar. I know he feels guilty for what happened. I'm sure he'll feel a whole lot more guilty tomorrow, but it will pass. I hope he comes to understand that he did nothing wrong. I dragged him into this. Goodbye, James. I'm going to go back to Greenvale. Say goodbye to my mother and to Dan. Then, well, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to ensure I don't hurt anyone yet. Current idea, put the car in the lake. Oh, who's that? Oh, speak of the devil. Hello? Abigail, I think you and James need to haul ass back to Greenvale. Why? It's Melissa Black. Did she wake up from her coma? No, Abby. She disappeared. Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter and Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin. 
with special guest Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Benton Hodges, Ben Lettieri, Madeline Rigby, Rory Jocelyn, and David Gardner as Carl Trevino. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Charles Topping and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next terrifying chapter of Haunted, the audio drama. Hi guys, this is Jamie Evans, the creator and showrunner of Haunted the Audio Drama. This is just a little quick note to add some additional credits onto the credits narrated by the lovely David Anthony Green. Um, as you're well aware, if you're a long-time fan of the show, we always thank Duncan Newham and Free Sprite Media in the credits for providing equipment support and studio space for us to record in. Well, for this episode, Renadine, parts one through four, uh, we actually owe an additional credit to Duncan, who very kindly has taken on editing duties for episode seven, parts one through four. So we just wanted to drop a little message here acknowledging his work and to say thank you for helping us out like that. We'll be back next week with another episode of Haunted.